My Gavanen folks. Today we have yet another interesting looking log integral, and yes, this will result in a relationship between a couple of special functions, so yeah. A bit of a spoiler, but at this stage you always know that if there is some kind of generalization, like we have i of n here, so it's going to result in, in some kind of special function iteration, I mean. Anyway, so we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log to the n of 1 minus x divided by x squared minus 2x plus 2. So immediately we spot something possible with the denominator. That is, we could factorize it. So we have log to the n of 1 minus x over x squared minus 2x plus 2, which can be broken down into plus 1 and plus 1. Okay, cool. Now, x squared minus 2x plus 1, this thing equals x minus 1 whole squared, which is, of course, equal to 1 minus x squared. So this implies that i sub n equals integral 0 to 1 log to the n of 1 minus x over 1 minus x squared plus 1 dx. And now we introduce a nice little transformation here that is letting 1 minus x equal t, which implies that negative dx equals dt. Now as x approaches 0, t approaches 1. Terribly sorry about that. And as x approaches 1, we have t approaching 0. So this implies that i sub n equals negative integral 1 to 0 of log to the n of t over t squared plus 1 dt. Okay, cool. So we can switch up the order of the limits of integration, and that will give us an extra negative sign that cancels out the one we already have. So we have integral 0 to 1, log to the n of t over 1 plus t squared dt. And now we're in a position to invoke the geometric series. Recall that 1 over 1 plus z can be expanded as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times z to the k, provided that the absolute value of z is less than 1. And here, that is the case for the t variable as well as t squared. So 1 over 1 plus t squared equals sum over k from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k times t to the 2k. So all of this implies that i sub n equals integral 0 to 1 log to the n of t times the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times t to the 2k dt. This thing, of course, being independent of the index variable n means we can take it inside the summation operator, meaning that we have the integral from 0 to 1 of log to the n of t, terribly sorry about that, we have the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times t to the 2k, and there we have log to the n of t dt. We can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators and write this as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of the integrals from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the k times t to the 2k times log to the n of t dt. Now the negative 1 term is of course independent of the x variable or the t variable that is with respect to which we're integrating. So we can take it outside the integration operator over here. Let me just move stuff around. And now we have a relatively simple looking integral to evaluate. So this is i sub n, and here is the integral that we need to solve for. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is let log of t equal negative u, which would imply that t here equals e to the minus u, implying that dt equals negative e to the negative u du. Now, as t approaches 0, we have u approaching infinity, and as t approaches 1, we have u approaching 0. Okay, cool. So all of this implies that i sub n is now the sum over k from 0 to infinity 
of negative 1 to the k times the integral from 0 to 1. And let me just minimize this a bit or move stuff around to give myself a bit more writing space. So we have integral 0 to 1. And t to the 2k, well, that would be e to the minus 2 times u. Hmm, rather, I should have let log t here equal u over 2, correct? Yeah, that would actually be slightly better. So in that case, on differentiating, we would actually get terribly, sorry about that, a factor of 1 half as well. So I would have negative 1 half, negative 1 half e to the minus u over 2. And that would mean I have a factor of negative 1 over 2 over here. And I have the integral from infinity to 0, that is, of what exactly? t to the 2k would now be e to, e to the k times u times log of t, which would be negative u over, well, that would be actually negative 1 to the n times u to the n over 2 to the n. Interesting so far. And we have the exponential term over here. And I should have just copied this down here. Terribly sorry about all that. So we have e to the minus u over 2 du and another factor of 1 half. No, oh, wait, it's already outside the integration operator. Okay, cool. So simplifying this a bit, we have a sum over k. So the index variable n doesn't really matter. But we do have negative 1 to the k and another negative 1 here. So that should be negative 1 to the k plus 1. That should work out quite nicely. We have negative 1 to the n outside over 2 to the n plus 1 now. And we have the integral from 0 to infinity, introducing yet another negative sign. So it's absorbed over here. k plus 2, negative 1 squared is just 1. So we just have negative 1 to the k, and that concludes the balancing act of the negative 1s. I really hope I didn't miss any one of them. That would be a rarity. Me not missing a negative 1, that is. Anyway, so what do we have left for the integrand? We have u to the n times e to the minus u times k plus 1 half. Come to think of it, uh, yeah, I don't think the substitution even was worth it. Anyway, we're going to have to make another substitution. Why did I not see this coming? So for this integral, we will let u times k plus 1 half equal z, which implies that du equals dz over k plus 1 half, which would in fact be mm, 2 dz over 2k plus 1. Looks good so far. And of course, this would mean that rather I should rewrite the u in terms of z as well. That should help with some cancellations. So yeah, introducing the k over 2 was actually superfluous, I guess. Anyway, we have 2z over 2k plus 1. And the limits of integration are clearly not bothered. So we have i sub n equal to negative 1 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1 times the sum over k from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the k times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the n, which would be, of course, 2 to the n times z to the n over 2k plus 1 to the n. And we have e to the minus z. And of course, we have the differential element, which is 2 dz over 2k plus 1. And like I said, the substitution was more or less superfluous because we still ended up canceling them out anyway. So I did not really need that, I guess they would have still cancelled out quite nicely. Anyway, I'm just overthinking this at this point. Uh, we have minus 1 to the n outside times the sum over k from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the k 
over the 2k plus 1 to the n plus 1 term, and we have integral 0 to infinity, z to the n times e to the minus z dz. This is something we recognize as the gamma function, particularly, particularly the gamma function evaluated at n plus 1, which is quite nice. So this implies that i sub n equals negative 1 to the n times gamma n plus 1 times the sum over k from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the k times over 2k plus 1 to the n plus 1. That is terribly sorry about that. Like I say numerous times, the math is much more natural and much easier than English or speaking generally. And this sum here is a very special function in its own right. This is the beta function, the Dirichlet beta function, that is, not the beta function as in the beta function and gamma function thing. I think it's called the, the, the Dirichlet beta function, that is. Nonetheless, we have this beautiful functional relationship between the gamma and beta function via this integral. And of course, if we plug in n equal to 1, we would have beta 2, which is actually Catalan's constant. And I really enjoyed the solution development. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.